All right, let's continue to review the base structure, and we're going to look at the state and widgets. So let's get an overview of the state and widgets. We're going to analyze the application's common features here. We're going to review the app state. It will be a global app state for the application. The application state notifier, so it notifies any children of any event so that it updates itself the particular layout. We're going to review the widgets, the application bar, elevated widget. It's a custom widget you're going to create. Uh, graph bar, the navigation bar, the navigation rail, and also we're going to create a custom toggle gradient bar. Let's get an overview of the state and widgets. We're going to review the Mac OS runner project. We're going to look at the debug profile.entitlements file. And we're going to make sure the two keys are added for the security network client and server. That way it allows us to make HTTP calls over the internet to retrieve images. We're going to do the same thing for the web project. We're going to look at the index.html file. And we'll look at the script section under the body. And we're going to set a configuration of render equals HTML for the Flutter rendering engine, OK? That way, we'll allow the HTTP calls to the internet to retrieve images and back for our development environment. Now, next, we're going to continue to review in the state and widgets. So make sure that you have your split screen responsive startup project open. Let's continue our overview and let's take a look at the uh, app state. So let's uh, open up the state folder. Let's open up the app state. And what do we have here? So we have a class called app state, which extends an inherited widget. So let's take a look. Why am I using an inherited widget? And you'll learn, you'll see how you'll use this later in our next videos. We're going to use the inherited widget to keep track of all this global data. We're going to keep track of the selected user. We're going to keep track of the user selected notifier. In other words, when we have our split screen and you choose someone on the list on the left side, a different user, we want the detail screen to be notified and change only when a user has been changed. Very performant. We're going to keep track of the selected page index. You know, where are we? Are we on the Users tab, the uh, Photos tab grid, or are we on the Dashboard? The Colors list, which we'll create it when we first load the application, and also two functions that sets the user index and that sets the page index. And then we have a method here of, of which does what? We can say appState.of, and we can get access from any children on a widget tree going up the tree, retrieving this data for us. Very beautiful to use, which uses the depend on inherited widget of exact type. How's that for a long name, huh? And then we have the update shall notify. So what is this? We only want the widget tree to change when a new user is selected, right? Especially when you're looking at a split screen scenario, or when you're looking at mobile scenarios and you're resizing the windows. So we only want to be able to set rejar our widget tree when the user was selected changes or that the page index has changed, right? From user to the photo grid and the dashboard. Excellent. Now, let's open up the app state notifier. So our inherited model is going to Track obviously says, hey, I got all the data. And then we have just a plain step stateful widget here that just takes a widget, right, as a child. So let's take a look at that. What do we got? What is this going to do? So this widget, when an item changes, want to rebuild on the widget tree, this app state notifier will be updated and it will say, hey, hello, it's time to change your screen, update yourself. And what does it look at? So it looks at the selected user index, the user selected notifier, the selected page index, and we have the cuddle list that we have built. So what's in our init state? And as a tip, always remember, always put your initializations after the super init, 
not before. All right, so we have the selected user index. We just give it a default value of negative one because first time we load the application, we don't know. We don't have a selected user. And the value notifier, you see the user selected notifier is what? We're going to give it a what? A blank default value, which is that method you, show, you saw in the user's model, right? And we use a value, null, value notifier, right? So that it knows to rebuild only when it's changed. We track of the selected page index, we'll default it to zero. And we have the colors list that is built here, random color list dot colors, right? And then what do we have? Those two functions that we pass, right? We have two functions here. One, set selected user index. So when the user changes on this app state notifier, we set the state and say, hey, the user changed, rebuild the widget tree. Very straightforward here. And the same, for the selected page index. You change from the users tab to the photos grid to the dashboard. And what's our build? Let's take a look at it. What does our build have? Ah, look at this. Here's our inherited widget, right? Our app state. And we're going to reset the values to the app state saying, hey, hello, these are the new values that have happened. Excellent, very performant. Let's close this down. Now let's take a look at our widgets. Okay, let's open up our widgets folder and let's take a look at the app bar elevated first. So what do we got here? So if you notice here, this is just a stateless widget. And I said, hey, implement it as a preferred size widget. Why? Because um, in a scaffold, when you pass the app bar, it has to be a preferred size widget. That's why we implement the stateless widget as a preferred size widget. So I wanted to do this because I wanted to customize our app bar. And what we're passing here is what? The title, right? But I want the shadow and the elevation to be true on all our app bars throughout the application. So we're going to set the theme of, as you can see here, just the context, build context. We're going to look at the color scheme and say, we want to use the primary color scheme with the opacity of 40%, 0 0.4, okay? And then you need to override the preferred size, which is we're gonna take the size from widget, and we're gonna say, hey, we want the app bar to be the size of the K toolbar height, right? Which is the default value here, if we go to the constants for the um, Flutter framework, they define it as a height of 56 pixels. Excellent. So let us close this down. Let's go to the next. Let's take a look at the graph bar. So this is a little custom widget that I created. And all it has is a, you pass an icon, the number to plot, the number to plot the maximum, right? I'm plotting 50 out of 100, let's say the maximum, and what the title should be, okay? And on the build here, let's scroll down. We have a few items, okay? And we have just defined some heights, the size box height, the bar height, the bar height, just some simple calculations, some default values for the bar width, the bar minimum height, the icon height and width, the padding top and bottom, the blur radius, the shadow opacity, the shadow offset, and so on. And you can change these according to your needs. Just a little custom vertical graph bar that I created, just very basic. It's got some box constraints, bar minimum height that you got from up there, okay? Some edge insets. And what does it, what does this do? How do you create this vertical bar? Basically, it uses a build icon, which is a cluster, and here's just a stateless widget. We'll take a look here in a few seconds, right? And we're just passing at the icon that we want, the height and the width. Then we have a little padding in between, right? We just want a top padding of what we declared above. And then we have a container here, which is the width and height that we set. And the light green shade of 400 is what we're using from our default theme color. And this is the actual container that the bar is going to plot, and it's going to vary in height according to the numbers passed. We have another padding. Let me scroll up a little bit more, OK, just of the padding top and bottom. And then we have what? The number to plot. 
and we have basically we're passing it on with the plot. It's just a text widget. And I just customize it with a headline medium. And I wanted the font weight to be mold, bold and the color to be blue gray. And I just like to add a little shadow. So I added some shallow shadows here, okay? And I just took the themes colors black with a shadow opacity from above. We have the shadow offset and the blur radius that we declared above. And then we have one more text widget in our column, which is the actual title, okay? And it's just saying, hey, use the title medium. Very good. And then how do we build that icon that is on top of our graph part that goes up and down over here showing the graph, right? We're just passing the icon, the height, and the width. That's all. A very basic build material returns what? Let's just take a look at this. Let me just expand it, okay? So it's just returning a material, okay? And let me just expand some of these things so that we can see. So we're saying, okay, in this material, shadow color is like green. I want the elevation to what we declared above. I want the icon to be in a circle border. That's it. And make the border side the circle like green. And then we have a size box of the height and width. And we do a decorated box, right, with a decoration of light green with a little bit of opacity of 0.15. We want the shape to be a circle, so it's a circle around the icon. And I want the border to be light green all around. And what is the child? Let's just center the child icon, whichever icon we are passing. Very good. Let's close that down. And now let's open up the navigation bar, the nav bar. It's a stateless widget. And what do we pass? Selected page index and the on destination selected, which is a value changed. Okay. And let's take a look at this. What do we have in our build, right? So we have a navigation bar with some destinations. We have three destinations. What are they? So remember, this navigation bar is at the bottom, okay? So we have one that is users. We have one that is the grid view for the photos. Scroll up a little bit. And then we have the bar chart for the dashboard. Straightforward, the selected index and the on destination selected on destination selected, right? So this is going to be basically the function being passed in, the value changed. Let's close that down. Let's open up the nav rail. When do we use the nav rail? This is going to be on the left-hand side when we have a split screen scenario. We move the bottom navigation bar away, and we show navigation rail on the left side. And again, we do the similar thing. We pass the selected index page, the selected page index, and the value changed function, which is on destination selected. And what does our build have? It's got the navigation rail with the background color of, we're just gonna take the primary color, inverse it with an opacity of 0 0.02. We want the label, the label type to be navigation rail type all so that it shows the label to the to next to the icons, okay? Below the icons in our case. Let me scroll up a little bit. We have a little bit of a leading pad. We have 24 pixels above, because I want to show on the top a little account icon, as you can see here, just a little account circle. The size is going to be the icon medium size, OK? And the theme is going to be the color scheme primary. So what is the destinations? The same as the bottom navigation bar. We have three navigation real destinations here, right? It's just different. Those had nav. Navigations, these have navigation rail destinations, right? And what do we have? The icon and the text, the people and users, same thing. The icon, the grid view, and yeah, you called it photos. And what's next? Yeah, icon bar, dashboard. Excellent. And the selected page index and the on destination selected function, which is an on destination selected. Excellent. Let's close this down. And uh, let's open up the title gradient bar. So what is this? This is just a little custom widget that just takes a title and an email. So what's in our build widget? We have a decorated box, right, with a box decoration. We're going to use a linear gradient. And this is used when we do the grid photos. 
At below at the bottom of each photo, we're going to have a little gradient bar, right? And we're going to have a title and an email that is uh, placed there. But what a nice little gradient so that it text is overimposed over the image. And what do we have? This is just a little linear gradient of gradient start and gradient end that we declared in the theme colors class. And what does it have? It has a child, right? It's just a column. Let's just scroll this up. And it has what? The title and the email. That's it. So we're basically just decorating this with a little shadow, creating shadow with the title and email above. All right, let's close this down. Excellent. Now let's take a look. Let me just close this lip folder down. Let's go into the uh, Mac OS and open up the Runner project here and open up the Debug Profile Entitlements. So what do we have here? So in order for us for the macOS application to be able to make HTTP calls that retrieve an image from the internet and down, Apple requires us to add these two keys, the security network client key and the security network server key. Once we do this, we're able to retrieve images. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to show the image back and it'll show like a little X showing, hey, image is not able to be retrieved. Now let's close that down. Close the Mac OS. We need to do the same for the web project and open up the index.html file. And we have two things that we need to do. This is just for the development environment, OK? So what do we have? Under the body, under the script section here, this is, like I said, a workaround for the cores, right, to allow images to show in a web page. This is just for development, so we can make the HTTP calls, retrieve an image, bring it down, and show it. All we need to say is say to let, just say let config equals, and we'll say, hey, Flutter, I want your render to be HTML. And then here, when you engine initializer, initialize the engine, pass the config, and it will render as HTML, and it will bypass in development mode any cores security. Excellent. Let's close that down. Let's get a summary of the state in widgets. You analyze the application's common features. You reviewed the state, the app state, the global app state, the app state notifier. You reviewed the app bar elevated, the graph bar, the navigation bar, the navigation rail, and also the title gradient bar. We reviewed the macOS runner project and looked at the debug profile entitlements file to make sure that the security and network client and server keys are added and enabled to allow HTTP calls over the internet to retrieve images. And for the web project, we looked at the index HTML file and we made sure that under the body and the script section, we configured the Flutter render to be HTML so that when we call the engine initializer, we use this config to enable HTTP calls in our development mode to retrieve images from the internet. Now next, you're going to be creating the helpers and pages.